kind of social cohesion and social integration, social inclusion have been sort of subject of interest, both in uh, policy, but as well as uh, public debates. When it's related, when it is related to the built environment, uh, social inclusion has been very often argued in residential terms. You might heard of this concept of residential segregation, especially uh, those students who are from familiar with Dutch context. I'm sure you heard of it. It is identified as residential concentration of two or more disadvantaged groups into different uh, neighborhoods. The assumption is when a disadvantaged group is concentrated one urban part in a neighborhood, it is less likely that they will have more social contacts with other groups with the broader society, which is a sort of negative impact on their social inclusion. Uh, focusing on Dutch context, this relation between social inclusion, integration, especially of migrant groups, and uh, urban uh, renewal and urban uh, restructuring projects has been strongly correlated in the policy documents. This is a brief overview uh, from 1990s of urban policies, uh, urban renewal and restructuring for policies in the Netherlands. As you see that in the final years, and in most recent years, there has been a strong emphasis that social integration and inclusion of particularly immigrant groups can be actually promoted through neighborhood restructuring projects by realizing social mixing. And by social mixing, what is understood to changing a social profiles of a neighborhood where immigrants or disadvantaged groups are highly concentrated by changing the composition in the housing market. So if it is mostly that's the case, social housing uh, context, then changing some parts of housing and introducing it private housing so that new residents will be able to uh, move in the neighborhood. Therefore, there will be more social mixing and more contacts. So this is a very broad, summary of uh, outline of the discussion, but of course it requires a more in-depth uh, discussion. So this is not only policy debate, it is not only academic debate that you hear only in academic paper or policy documents, but it is part of also public debates. You know, when you open your newspaper, you see that some neighborhoods have these problems and they have to be removed or uh, restructured. So this has been going on since especially from 2000, uh, 2007. So in this context, uh, my research was about actually developing a different perspective to study social inclusion aspect of the cities from public space. My uh, research focused on particularly uh, studying uh, the presence of uh, vulnerable groups, and in this case it was immigrant groups in public space, as a sort of manifestation of their rights to participate in public life uh, of the city, which is a key feature of their uh, social inclusiveness and also to achieve socially inclusive cities. Um, I focus on um, the presence of Turkish migrants by looking at their amenities. So these are shops, restaurants, organizations, and religious places, and so on and forth. And I study how their presence in public space change in the time period of 2007-2016 uh, in Amsterdam. Um, of course, it is not a coincidence that I focus on Amsterdam. It is a migrant city. You know, if we think of like a region of 1 million population of Amsterdam, almost half of the population has an origin from another country throughout the history. And Amsterdam has also lots of immigrant neighborhoods, which are characterized by shops and uh, religious places and so on and forth. It's a multicultural city in that sense. And Amsterdam has been also a subject of urban restructuring uh, projects along many other Dutch cities, and which studies show that uh, has an impact, a significant impact on the residential concentration of immigrant groups. So what I mean by that, as this uh, study show, from central neighborhoods, 
these are the residential segment, uh, uh, residential concentration of areas of immigrants from central neighborhoods immigrants began to disperse to the outskirts of the city along with the urban restructuring prox, uh, process of course this is not only a local phenomena or national phenomena only because of residential uh, restructuring process but it's also part of the international trend actually which put amsterdam in the global, global map of a real estate bubble this is from uh, a research from uh, bank ubs global estate bubble index of 2017 as you see as you probably not able to see i will show you here amsterdam became one of the largest real estate bubbles in the world uh, in the last actually uh, five six years according to this index which is uh, comparable with London, with Munich, with Hong Kong, with Toronto and Vancouver and so on and forth. So this says something about uh, increasing prices of the houses, especially in the private market. And this is on the one hand. And on the one other hand, there is this uh, large scale of urban restructuring projects going on in the city, which is actually influencing uh, the distribution of these groups who cannot afford the new houses. And then all these uh, elements uh, create a sort of significant impact on the social landscape of the city. So uh, what I have done, given the very limited time uh, of my presentation, I study each street of Amsterdam region, including Zandam and Amstelveen, really like street by street, noting down the location and characteristics of these immigrant amenities in the time period of 2007 and 16. And I change how these amenities change in the context of urban restructuring. The research has two uh, scale. Uh, one is at the uh, city uh, level, Metropole Amsterdam level. And the second level was on the street level, which I focus on several uh, neighborhoods, which are drastically influenced by these urban restructuring process. And I had more chance for in-depth analysis by speaking to people who are using these shops and analyzing uh, the features of these amenities in terms of their personalization and their robustness, how they generate public life uh, on the neighborhoods in which they are located and also studying their uh, social context, who are visiting them, how their visits change along the time, how do they observe the changes in their neighborhood. To conclude, uh, my research suggests the following. It showed that there is a gradual shift from a social democratic uh, perspective towards a liberal welfare regime in the Netherlands, especially since uh, the 1980s. And this is supported by uh, researchers and scholars on, on the policy, uh, policy field. Uh, my study also suggests that the outcomes of urban transformation processes had negative impacts on the presence of immigrant amenities in public space. This has been very drastic, especially in inner city neighborhoods. Just to give you an example, if there are like 15 Turkish shops, which was the focus of this research in the year of 2007-8, this became like five, four shops uh, along in the period of urban restructuring process. Um, study also suggests that public space, so even though you have the regional focus, if you want to know about social life, social inclusion of particular groups, the focus on public space can provide solid evidence for the most important aspects of inclusive public spaces, which is significant for inclusive cities too. And these insights can be complementary of all these you know, statistical measurements of which ethnic groups are living where, how their housing trends or uh, uh, um, success is changing by the time and so on and forth. So with full respect to statistical measurements analysis on the one side, studying public space, really going into street level, talking to people, investigating in depth what is going on in the neighborhood life can give you a complementary and solid evidences on socially inclusive cities. Um, also, studying public space can provide a useful tool to diagnose and also assess 
the inclusive character of public space before and after urban interventions too, which is very often actually missing in uh, urban renewal projects, this assessment, you know, so what happens afterwards? How was it before and what changed later on? So public space focus can provide that perspective. And most importantly, and I'm trying to do it in my own practice as a lecturer, training and education for the design and planning of public space should also incorporate social aspects, social inclusion aspect to promote main components of the inclusive cities. This was a short presentation and I see I even exceeded for two minutes, but if you would like to know more about this research, uh, it is free uh, access, online access at the TEDA website. So please just Google it and you can uh, search and read more in depth. Thank you very much.